hey, what's up to the point listeners? Happy new year. I hope you are still fighting the good fight for those new year's resolutions, because if you gave up already, that's a shitty way to start the year. So get it right. Get it tight. I want to give a little bit of love to two of our sponsors that are coming on board big time for Rhino X. Number one being Nuvi. This thermostat is ridiculous. A game changer. It's the first thermostat that will increase membership retention. It's the first thermostat made by contractors for contractors. It's the only thermostat to connect straight to your CRM and will display the service ad on it. And it will dispatch the technician from the thermostat. How badass is that? I cannot wait to hear more about it at Rhino X. And second, got to give a little love to our friends, our new friends at Daikin for coming in in a big way as the evening sponsor. A lot of our customers use Daikin. And we've heard a lot of great things about them. So we're excited to have that crew here on site at Rhino X. Enjoy this episode with my man, Zach Garrett, on winning the review game. Hey, what's up, everybody? It's your boy, Cristiano, the host of To The Point Home Services Podcast. You know what? I'll switch that up every once in a while. Hey, what's up, everybody? It's your boy, Chris, the host of To The Point Home Service. No. No good? That sounded like you called one of those lines that you don't call ever, okay? If you value your relationship that you're in. Um, I don't know where I'm going with that, but I'm excited about today's podcast. I got my man Zach Garrett on here too, who is the founder and CEO of Liftify, formerly Five Star Reviews, um, who's actually a vendor that we have used at Rhino to help us spread the love by way of review, preferably positive, reviews and he did a phenomenal job him and his team did a phenomenal job for us which then we shared with a few of our other customers and he did a phenomenal job for them both hvc plumbing roofing but he's been in this game for a minute but what i love about this is actually he's uh he's where he's in the great state of indiana and uh your favorite host of to the point podcast is also a hoosier boy even though i'm not really an iu fan purdue fan but we're called hoosiers so i digress but hey Zach, welcome. I'm glad to have you on to the Boy Podcast because our listeners want to know what the hell's going on with reviews, what's changing. And they're going to say, man, Chris, but this person has five reviews and I've got 500, but they're ranking better than me. What can we do? Is it, do I need more reviews? What's going on? I'm better company than all those questions that you've heard that I've heard. I want to kind of walk through all these things and maybe even potentially what to expect because here in 2023, uh, we need to be able to pull out all the stops to be as competitive as possible to to stay successful. I mean, cr- thankfully we've been uh, you know, we the world knows that we deal with the essential businesses. That's what the home services industry is. But you can't get complacent because complacency has no vacancy. Check it. Um, and this is one thing that you can do that you could be proactive with. And you need to be proactive with. That's not going away. Would you agree, Zach? Absolutely. You better hope so because your whole business is built on it. (laughs) (laughs) Welcome to the show, man. Yeah. Thanks for having me. And yeah, from Indiana, but definitely a Boilermaker as well. So go Purdue. It's a fun time for basketball. That's right. Boiler up. Uh, Currently, as I record this podcast, we are ranked number what, Zach? Number one. Let's hope we hold it for a while. Boiler up. Hammered down. Now, speaking of hammered down, let's hammer down right now. We're going to talk reviews and reviews of all sorts. So um, I want to jump right into it first and just kind of let our listeners know a little bit about um, how you even got into this whole, you know, the whole review space and kind of what you've been doing. Because you've had some really high profile customers that you worked with in the home services space, too, and some different franchises um, and things like that. So maybe just let our listeners know a little bit about you and why I even have you on there. And then also uh, why we, Rhino, decided to make you a strategic partner of ours to share with our contractors because... You've been crushing it, doing a good job. We vetted you out. It only took you, what, a year to get through my vetting process? <laughs> I know about it, yeah. So so go ahead and let our listeners know uh, what you're all about, brother. Yeah, absolutely. Well, um, my background is really, I started my career in a big B2B marketing, working for a Fortune 1000 company and worked my way up running their digital marketing. And starting this business was really out of a, a need of my own in, in my own life. I was looking for home service companies And we replaced a roof. We had an HVAC problem. We literally put in a patio, you know, all these different things. And the only thing I did was look at reviews online. And I was surprised that uh, not enough companies had enough recent reviews is all I wanted to see. And it was just a question that kind of festered. And and, uh, I mulled on for a while. 
And then I ended up reaching out to some companies just locally and started to work as kind of a side thing with them. And we've figured out and have continued to optimize a process and a technology stack to make it really effective to get reviews from your customers and take that uh, load off the uh, employee's plate. And uh, it started as just something to help out some local companies and, and really started morphing and growing quickly. And we jumped in full time and uh, are building the company now and um, have uh, roughly a thousand customers. And, and like you mentioned, Chris, we work with some major franchise brands in the home services space, including uh, Serve Pro Painters, uh, Serve Pro, just a restoration uh, business, uh, California Closets, Floor Coverings International, uh, big brands like that in the franchise space. And then um, lots of HVAC companies too. Uh, as well, in including some some Rhino customers. Yeah, man, but you had some success with uh, one of my favorite New Zealanders here recently because I know you texted me some results that you were excited about that you had for him, man. Why don't you share that real quick? Because I know he's listening. Yeah, absolutely. Shout out to Dave uh, in in New Zealand with Junk to Go. Um, they uh, they came to us and were just getting uh, you know 10, 20 reviews a month for their high volume, very successful uh, business. And uh, they're just one month in, but the the screenshot I had just texted you was they've gone from 20 last month. They're on pace for 260 uh, this month reviews at a 4.9 rating. So they're just crushing it and, uh, and getting all those positive reviews. So it's fun to see cases like that. And I think, Chris, like what gets me up every morning is the fact that these businesses we work with, like Dave, who you know, I just met, like they're out there trying to serve people well, do a good job with their business. And we get to come alongside them and just help them tell that story of their customers. And that's the most rewarding part of it. That's a huge jump. Well, I remember whenever we used you for Rhino specifically, like um, it made me a believer for me because it worked so well. I mean, and I was your customer. So what better of a vetting process do I need than to vet you out for my own business? And it worked out really, really well. You know what I need to do is I need to get you on board for here on the podcast to the point because I think that uh, we could do a better job of trying to bring in reviews. We share them on every podcast um, and I love sharing them and I love sharing them with the guests that come on when people leave reviews specifically for them. So, Hey, you mentioned like uh, junk to go sitting at a 4.9. That's ideal. I always wonder um, because I still look at a lot of reviews too. Like, especially if my wife's going to look at anything like, you know, for Christmas time, we're always looking at reviews on specific things that you're wanting to buy because online sales are so you know significant. Um, or if you're looking at restaurants, there's like a certain threshold to where if that thing is like under four, the odds of us going are probably pretty slim. Is there some sort of like threshold number that you where you start to see like a serious decline in business because it's sitting at a 3.8 or a 4.1 or is what's the number, man? I know you have to have something there. Yeah, the low bar is a 4.0. You do not want to be below 4.0. Like you said, nobody will trust you if you're below a 4.0. Um, ideally, you know, 4.5 to 4.7 is probably the sweet spot. You guys could speak better into it from an SEO perspective on what that sweet spot is. But um, we run into a lot of businesses that want to be a 5.0. You know, they want every review to be perfect. And we also tell them on that, hey, you need some authenticity. You know, just like on Amazon, you want to see stuff that looks real, you know, and you need that authenticity. So it's okay to not be a 5.0. Uh, but you definitely want to be in that 4. You know, 5 to 4.7 range, I would say is the sweet spot. Yeah. Okay. So, I mean, and we do, because to me, once it drops to a 3.9, now it starts with a three and like, that's a harder one to overcome. Um, but typically you're seeing those guys at 4.5 and above that are the most successful that have higher conversions and the conversions in my world matter, right? Like that's the game that we're in yeah, is converting, absolutely. you know, search searchers or people getting in the site or whatever to actually converting. So part of our process, when we onboard a new customer or, or even look at p potential customers, when we're vetting them out, is we look at their, what their reviews are to see what they look like, because that's going to give us an idea of what the challenges are that we might face with conversions. So, um, since we kind of talked about this, like you, you um, something that, that, that I hear often too is around like trolls, right? Trolls. And then the people who are going around also leaving, they're just assholes and they leave negative reviews or they're not assholes. They're just actually paid to leave those negative reviews. Like this is something that happens so frequently um, and it's frustrating because it's not easy to get those things fixed. Um, we have some solutions to help get those things fixed, but like, how do you handle, like, how would you give our listeners, like, what should they do to handle trolls? Like what's some advice that you can give them? Yeah, absolutely. So I'll give them three specific actions. I would immediately respond publicly to that review, meaning respond to the review and just say, Hey, I don't see you in our database. You know, this isn't an actual job that we did. Um, because 
potential readers will almost discredit it right then, right? And so then it's not actually really hurting your business from a consumer standpoint. So I would respond, you can do that right away. That's in your control. Um, I think secondly, you can also report that to Google or use a tool that can try to get that removed. Like you said, Chris, that's hard to do and time consuming and you can't always do it and, and it's out of your control. Um, and But I would recommend it, if, especially for fake reviews that you see that are just not real. Um, you can re re report those and try to get those off. Um, but third and most importantly, and this is where businesses don't take this step, is you need to play offense and you need to maximize the reviews you're actually getting. You know, get reviews from all of your positive customers, your happy customers. Most businesses we come into, 95% of their customers or more are not leaving them reviews. And most of those experiences are five stars. And so the best thing you can do is just play offense, go get reviews from your happy customers and tell your community how good your company actually is. Yeah. So, so why don't you explain then how, like, how do the contractors go about that? Or what's the best practices around asking for the reviews or, or like when to ask for those reviews? Yeah. All right. So I'm going to give you a little bit of a controversial answer to this, if that's okay. Sure. So the first thing that we recommend is not relying on your text in the field to do it. Most companies rely on their text to trigger something. We've seen too many times. It's hard to be consistent with that. It's hard for them to consistently do it. So don't rely on your text. Um, automate it if you can. If you use you know, one of the big CRMs and stuff, it's easy to automate that kind of stuff to make sure that it happens every single time in your business is just part of your process. Um, and on the timing part, do it as soon as you can. Do it the same day if you can that you have the job or at least soon after. Um, I'll give the caveat to Chris, and maybe this is a question going forward, but um, you know, kind of a secret in this is if you want to get a boost in your reviews, you can also go back and run some campaigns to get some reviews from past customers. We do this and it works incredibly well. You know, not quite as high as a conversion as right after the job, but you know, if you are a company that's sitting there and you are like, shoot, 95% of my customers this year didn't leave me a review, you you can go get those. You know, don't don't count those as lost. You've already done the work. Um, so you know, don't rely on your text, automate the process if you can. Um, use you know, use campaigns to go back from time to time and recapture those reviews. And then probably the biggest thing I'd recommend is just in your experience, whether you're working with us or somebody else or doing it on your own, personalize that experience to the customer. You know, asking somebody to take a moment to leave your business a review should not look transactional like the automated text saying, hey, we're on our way, you know, yep. or here's your bill. It should be personalized and from you as the leader or owner of the business saying, hey, we appreciate you. We appreciate you supporting our business and our community. Please help us. And if you personalize it, that will go a long way in helping people, giving people the the reason to give you a chance and give you two seconds to go leave you that great review. Got it. So I'm going to ask you a controversial question. Okay. Okay. Um, and this is around like somebody who has known for a while they need to go get more reviews or they've not really been like super proactive on going and getting reviews. So now they have to say, okay all right, Zach or whomever, um, it's time for me to go after some reviews. Um, here you go. Here's all my customer list, but you know, there's going to be some of those customers that aren't going to give you the best review or potentially give you a bit the best review. So I say, all right, man, here's my database. Go at it. Like, what do you say to that? Cause that's gotta be something that, that comes up because nobody's making everybody happy. Like it is impossible to make everybody happy at scale. So what do you say to that, man? Like, why would I want to give you my entire list knowing I'm going to get some negative reviews too? Yeah. Yeah. We'll keep the goal in mind that we talked about at the beginning, right? Your goal is to be at a 4.5 to 7 company, right? So you don't a hundred percent of five-star reviews. Um, typically when we get into that conversation with the customer, we'll say, look, grab your last couple of years of customers, take five minutes, run it through with your team take off, I'll call it the crazy customer or that customer that's going to give you an unreasonable, not real review anyway. You know, you remember them even from 18 months ago, if they were that crazy and, you know, pull them out, but just send everybody else. Companies spend way too much time curating their list for reviews. They need to just trust that they do a good job. They wake up every morning and serve people well and go ask. And how we see that shake out is you have mostly five-star reviews. It's going to help your rankings. You're going to get all of the down, the downstream, you know, positive impacts in your business when you do that. But you ready for this? So one of my core values is integrity. 
one of my core values is transparency and we don't always get it right. So is it fair to say the most authentic platform to leave a review on based on your experience, you would say, yeah, pull these guys out. Even if they were right, even if the customer has the reason to be angry, like, I mean, I'm just saying like, if you, like, if I only pluck out the ones to give me five stars, yes, it helps me from a performance perspective, but is that really being real? Does that lack integrity? Uh, I don't know. I'm just asking, asking what your two cents is. Cause you know, some of those outliers, you know, you did all the right things to make it right. And to me, I can live with taking that part out because there was no making that customer happy regardless. Yeah. So that's kind of where I'm headed with it is like, you know, my gut feeling is say, Hey, I like, I for sure want to make sure I'm getting positive reviews, but I also don't want to lose the integrity of the business and the freedom of speech of like, Hey, did we perform well? Do we not perform well? Do I take that away from those who had a poor experience from us? What's your thoughts? Yeah, no, hundred percent agree. And so when I, let's define a crazy customer as someone who's going to leave a review that doesn't reflect what you actually did or what your team tried to do, you know, and everybody has those customers where you tried everything and they're still going to make, you know, something up that wasn't really true. So I'd pull those people out because that doesn't help consumers in your community either help understand how your business runs. But other than that, let it fly, like trust that you run a good business, ask everybody. And I think if you do it personalized, the other thing too, you'll be surprised at even if people didn't have a perfect experience in the moment and you're making the ask, you're saying, please help my local business. A lot of times people are actually surprised at how positive the reviews are. You know, people that are just even, you know, on the fence, if they're going to put their name out there, they're going to more generally leave a positive review. So uh, absolutely don't, you know, don't fake it. Don't fake it on Google. You know, Google will win that every time if you try to play games with Google and consumers know too, you know, if the reviews look fake. So be authentic, ask almost everybody. I mean, our benchmark uh, for our customers, we ask hundred percent, but for our customers, we tell them to ask 95% of their customers. You should ask for a public review. So that's the standard that, that we recommend. Got it. Okay. So let me throw this out there to you. Um, you know, because I'm a marketing company, I always think through um, what are all the factors to creating a complete SEO strategy and, and reviews are a part of that factor. Now I talk about search engine optimization, like it's a big um, it's like a big uh, jigsaw puzzle. Okay. There's some pieces that are more valuable or, or larger than others. Um, but in order to see the entire, the picture in its entirety, you still have to put all the pieces together. So where like you have to make sure that you writing content for a site is, is a major factor, but also some are maybe the alt tags or making sure you're getting the reviews or making sure that you're updating the Q and a portion of the G the Google business profile, whatever it is, you got to put all the pieces together to complete the picture in its entirety. Like those are the facts you have to do to get it done, to be able to have the best overall ranking factor and reviews is a piece of that. So what I wonder is, do you believe based on your experience um, or have you heard from others that if the review also just happens to have what the services that you performed in the location that you performed it, that it could potentially impact your overall rankings? Let me give you an example. Hey, I really loved ABC Heating and Air Conditioning. Uh, they came out and did a uh, AC repair you know, way out here in Johnson city and they were professional and they didn't rake me over the coals on costs and they were polite and they did the job, you know, when they said they were going to do it, thank you. We highly recommend. Well, what I threw in there was a couple of keywords. I threw in AC repair. I threw in Johnson city. So I just wonder if that's not, even if it's a percent of the, of the, of the puzzle, does that matter? I know that there's nowhere in black and right white that that's written, but based on like what we've experienced, I've got my belief. What have you, do you know anything about that? Have you heard that? Has it been asked of you? Like what's your two cents on it? Yeah, absolutely. Well, let me answer it this way. I say that there has historically been four elements of a review that impact SEO. And now there's five. So let me give you the fifth one as well. So well, give the me obvious all five. one. Yeah. So I'll, I'll start with number one. The obvious one is the number of reviews, you know, that you have is obviously a factor. Secondly, the rating, you know, so you want to be that 4.5 to 4.7 rating. Third is recency. So how frequently are you getting reviews? Google, if you look at the data, they're absolutely factoring into the algorithms, how often you get reviews. So if you're a company that has 5,000 reviews, but you're getting 1%, 
you might be losing in some local SEO battles, you know, with your competitors because they might be getting more now. And that's what Google cares about and what consumers care about, frankly, too. So that's the third thing. So you have the total number, the rating, the recency. And then fourth, Chris, to your point is comments and absolutely responding with comments when you're including keywords. Now, we always tell people don't overdo it, just like in, just like a page or a blog or anything. You don't want to keyword stuff it, but you can respond in a natural form. And Google is absolutely tracking that. But the fifth one that I'll throw out to you that I would encourage all of the listeners, if you haven't looked at your page, go click the write a review button and see if it's there for your business yet, is Google's question that they're asking, did you work with this company? And if you do, if you mark yes on that on the review page, it is actually pulling up a list of could be five to 50 keywords. And it's actually allowing you to choose the services that you worked with on the business. And so you can actually not now not just leave a company a five star review and a comment, but you can actually choose AC repair, plumbing, roofing, you know, whatever that service is. And you can bet Google is factoring that in to the algorithm and saying, hey, how many when somebody searches for AC repair, what companies have the most reviews recently with the highest rating? All of those factors now, you know, not just for the company, but for those specific keywords. And I think that's going to be a big deal when it comes to search going forward. Yeah, I'm, that actually makes a lot of sense. Um, and I don't think it ever goes away. I mean, let's talk about the local service ads program. Like, you know, it's same thing where it's, there's, you know, speed is a necessity. You want to get to things quickly. You, I like that you used um, recency. Um, basically, that is how soon are you getting reviews? Like, you know, if somebody's sitting there that has a thousand reviews but they've not gotten any new reviews in, you know, a couple of weeks because they got a thousand, which is 500 more than the next guy. Um, then there's an opportunity for you who's down to get more frequent reviews, you know, which means um, you can at least start to win that battle if it indeed is a ranking factor. Yeah. So specifically in local service ads, something we get asked often is like, Hey, I'll set my budget to unlimited, but you can't spend it. Like, you can't spend it because you don't have the proper ranking. And so you have to do like everything that you possibly can to try and increase that ranking factor. Because let's, let's face it, like everybody wants local service ad leads because right now it's the best. They're the least expensive ones to get. It's the least uh, risk to get. There's so many positive factors, but it's going to continue to go up in price. Mark my words. It is going to continue to go up in price just like it was designed from the beginning. Um, but still it's inexpensive. So why wouldn't you try and continuously go after the uh, frequent, like getting more reviews as frequently as possible? That's like when, internally how we're managing out local service ads for our customers now is we're like for HVAC, our average cost per lead right now in LSA is like $42. Ridiculous. I'll take that all day long, but you got to be able to be in the position to get that lead. So, and it's not just set my budget to max budget like everybody else. So reviews is a factor. Speed is a necessity. Frequency or recency, as Zach was saying, is an absolute piece of the puzzle to this thing. So have somebody who can do it and, and do it frequently and keep going after it. Listen, I'm failing at this as I just sit here and think through about myself as, as the CEO of Rhino. Um, we did a, a really great run with you, Zach. And then I've said, I had you work with some of our customers and I never pulled you back in to work with, with me right? Like I should continuously be doing it. So shame on me for not, you know, practicing what I'm preaching right now. So uh, I will take ownership of that. I need to get going with it too. Um, it just clicked to me and we started talking about recency. So, um, but there's companies like that, that, that can help you, you know, that, that can go do it for you, especially if you're a small business and you're actually out physically still working in the field and doing all the things or it's peak season and you are like pulled back into it, whatever it is, Google, where you rank on Google is going to matter. I don't know when that's going to stop mattering, especially anybody who's trying to grow a business is incredibly important. So why not do all the things you have to do? Reviews is, is one of them that's important, whether it's on your Google business profile, if it's on your LSA, if it's directories, if it's Yelp, all the things, I don't want to go down that path um, of reviews on, on Yelp or better business bureau, any of that stuff, but you got to pay attention to these things. And guess what? Plenty of opportunities for you to reach out and ask questions if you don't capture everything from here and people who are willing to help you, regardless if you become a customer or not. Okay. Yeah. Um, hey, Chris, if I can throw in one thing that would just, we're coming up on the end of the year, you know, when we're recording this, and it's a great time to reflect on your business. And, and I would challenge everybody to ask this question. And Chris, maybe with your team, you can huddle up on this is to ask the question of what is the ideal moment in our customer journey 
to ask for that review. And it's not the same in every industry. You know, for a service business where you're coming in, you're doing an AC repair, it probably is as soon as it's done, you know, that you want to ask that. But we work in restoration, for example. And when we ask that and they really think about it, they're like, before the invoice gets there. Like, that's when we have to do it. When the job's done, the customer's happy, they're moving back into their home, but they haven't got the invoice. Like, that's the moment. For you, it might be 90 days or 180 days after you start, you know, where people start to see the real impact of the work with you, um, you know, or whatever. I'm just making that up. But every business should really think about that question and then implement a process or a partner and, and be clear on that. Um, we have asked that question hundreds of times, Chris, and I probably have had two people ever have an answer on when I actually want to review. They've never really thought about it. So just as something to add, like think about that and then build a process around when that optimal time is. Got it. So, so when you connected with Dave, since this is more recent adjunct to go, when was the optimal time for him to ask for that? For him, it was right after the, it's a junk removal business. So whenever that crap has been was gone that's the moment you know that's when people are the happiest when that yeah, stuff make, is out of their lives yeah that makes the most sense to me right because you're trying to get them to get all that shit out of there uh or junk or trash or whatever it is like but then when it's gone you come like i've 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 used this frequently so i like to pull into my courtyard and if there's any stuff like where i, I have to purge things from the garage or whatever or my kids have gotten older so i've removed things or i got rid of a hot tub or something like that and i see it sitting in my courtyard I feel so much better when I pull in and it's not there. That's the right time to ask me for a review because I'm feeling one way or another about that particular service. So I would have never guessed on the restoration piece that, but I think now that you say it out loud, it makes sense because they're about to get a pretty decent sized invoice for what's about to be done. <laughs> Yeah. And, and they don't really know, right? Because it's a, uh, it's all insurance paid. So, you know, they don't really care about cost up front, but let me give you a couple of examples in, in different industries. So we work with California closets. They do custom home storage solutions. We have found with them when that job is done is actually not the best time. The best time is like 30 or 60 days after they installed, because that's when people have moved their stuff into the closet or they set up their entertainment center, or their home office, they've used it for a little bit of time. And so not only are they more apt to give a review, but the comments that they actually leave are more valuable to the company because it can say, hey, I've been using this solution for 60 days. It's great. Um, or in a, a flooring example, you know, we found like the day the flooring is installed, people are looking at all the details and the nicks and, and the little things. But a week later, after they move their furniture back, they love it, you know, and so that week after is a good timing. So just think about your customer experience and like, when is that optimal time? And just don't assume you know, it, it's right after the job just because it is in certain industries. So would roofing play into that as well? Because you obviously like you, if you get a new roof put on and it's not raining, you might not know there's a, another a problem or that there's not a problem, you know? So is it kind of a similar, cause you've worked with you know, a couple of our roofing customers too. So like, what's the optimal time there? Yeah. I, for roofing, I, I would say sooner if you're good at cleaning up around the perimeter, <laughs> If you're not, you might give them a few days to allow the homeowner to clean up a little bit. We we went through that uh, on our own. But if you do a good job, I think roofing, you know, I've been through this in my my own personal life, like do it within a week. You know, people are excited when they come home, they're starting to look at it. After that, they might not look at it as much and remember that their their roof is new. Um, but yeah, sooner the better on that one, I would say. Got it. So um, actually, that makes a lot of sense. Because even though it's like, Technically, it's a visual product, too, because you see the roof of your home. And, and it is interesting to think, like, when you change your roof and you maybe change, like, the colors or or the tiling that you're using, like, it's actually a, your, it's a visual product. But it's also a, it's a necessary product. Like, it is to protect the home and to protect from leaks and all the things that can cause major, major problems. But same thing, like, if it's here in Phoenix, Arizona, it might not rain for two months you know, so we don't really know like if it worked or didn't work. So, um, I guess you kind of have to have a little bit of a gut feeling there. I mean, but same thing with the, if I start to look through heating and air conditioning, like, I mean, I guess here in Phoenix, more often than not, we're using our air conditioners 10 months out of the year. Um, if you get it changed out, people don't necessarily care about how pretty it looks or how nice it looks out there. They just want to make sure that it's not 110 degrees in the house. Um, so I guess depending on which, you know, area of the United States or Canada or Australia or whatever country you're in or place you live, um, it would matter based on what the seasonality is. Like if somebody replaced my furnace, I'm not using it. I just, all I got to go off is customer service and costs. 
quality. I don't know. Um, yeah. So, well, well that, that's a good point, Chris, too, because in, in those kind of businesses like HVAC or even roofing, you know, what people are actually reviewing is really how did the, the technician or the person coming into your home make you feel? You know, did they educate you? Did they do a good job? You know, did they treat you well and, and take care of you? It's not really the actual product. Like you assume the new furnace is going to work, <laughs> you know, or the roof is going to is going to stop the leaks and be a good quality. And so, um, you know, if you're not focused on this, when you do with your team, like it will actually change how they treat people, you know, because if, if you incentivize this in, in meaning just even in accolades or, you know, personal recognition to your team, you know, and, and they have it on their mind and you're saying, okay, my owner cares about getting reviews. It is important to him. You know, we need to get them every day. They will actually treat customers better, which is what you want in the end anyway. Got it. So, um, I know we kind of talked about the, um, like recency getting or the frequency of getting these. I mean, how do you know, how do you know, like if I'm a contractor sitting here right now, listening to this thinking like, am I doing enough now? Um, is there like an indicator here? Like of, should I, you know, cause if I'm listening to it and thinking like, okay, well, you know, Zach owns a review company. So his answer is going to be like, yeah, you should be doing it every single month because there's, that's how we're programmed to think like we're being sold on something. Um, but here's what I care more about is, how do I know if I'm doing enough? Because I can say from Rhino right now, like um, I don't necessarily see my ranking or anything being impacted by somebody else having more reviews or less reviews than us. So I don't have like that driver to that made me take action. So I'm like, I'm not even being reactive at this you know point. I'm just kind of sitting stagnant, um, which I don't agree is the right move to make. But like, what, you know, how do they know if they're doing enough? Like what, is, what is like the basics that they should be paying attention to, to make sure that they're doing enough? Yeah, absolutely. Well, um, the answer to that is to take the number of reviews you got in the last 30 days and divide it by the number of customers you serviced in the last 30 days. And if you do that and your percentage is probably going to be two to 4%, you're normal. <laughs> but what that means is that 96 to 98% of your customers did not leave your review in that month. And when we go through this exercise, I won't uh, mention the name, Chris, but at HVAC company, well-known in the Midwest, we sat down with them and they said, Hey, I think we're doing pretty good. We got like 50 reviews last month. And, you know, so we see them dinging every time they've got a bunch of locations and stuff. And I said, okay, but how many jobs did you do? You know, whatever, how many thousand it was. And you can see the light bulb go off, like, shoot, that's 2%. We have 98% of our customers that aren't, aren't getting reviews. And so just look at that. You should be getting at least 10% as a low bar. I think we have customers achieving well into the 20s or 30s. It does depend on your industry a, a little bit, you know, for what, what you can do and how customized the service is. But between 10 and 20% is where you should be. And look at that factor. I think the the risk that especially the larger companies have, Chris, is if, if you're a small company and you're not getting 20% of your customers to leave you a review, you've got a real problem because you know it. You're only doing 10 jobs a month. Like you feel I'm not getting reviews. If you're doing a thousand jobs a month and you have a bunch of locations, 2%, you're still getting a bunch of reviews. You're seeing them every day. You're thinking, okay, we're doing good. And that's a fallacy because you're not doing near as well as you could. You should be getting hundreds of reviews from your customers. And when you do that, it's playing into that recency, right? It's playing into your SEO. They're tagging the services they work on. It's helping all the other marketing components that you're doing. And so it's a really low you know, effort way to really amplify everything you're doing. And just simply look at your reviews, go to Google, count them in the last 30 days, divide it by the number of jobs and, and you know, decide, hey, what you're probably going to come to is, hey, we need to be better at this. So what's the average if you had to give one? You said like two to like that two to four percent or whatever is low, but like is that normal? Like Yeah. Okay. Wow. We two to four percent is the average of we work with close to a thousand companies. Um, two to four percent when we start working is is average. Got it. Uh, e even using automated, you know, texting solutions and different things that are part of your other customer experience. Um, but businesses just don't feel it because the volume is so high, you know, especially in the industry um, that you guys play in, you know, people are servicing a lot of customers that they feel okay. But, you know, when you s reverse it and say, okay, if we're getting 2%, that means 98% are not telling us how they feel about us. 
Got it. So actually it's pretty good perspective to think through and compare how you're doing. Um, I bet I know who the customer is that you're talking about in the Midwest. <laughs> Maybe I do. I don't know. I don't know if it's somebody I turned you on to or not. Um, the, I guess the other question I have too, is if you don't mind if I ask about your actual, your business specifically, um, just for some perspective is like, what's typically the cost to like, I mean, I'm not sure how you fare like against others in the, in the industry, like competitors of yours or whatever, because there's obviously like, there's lots of options here. Um, but like, what's a typical cost if a contractor wanted to, you know, use you, you know, on a consistent basis to go after those reviews? Yeah, absolutely. Happy, happy to answer it. Just give an industry landscape in, in our world of call it reputation management, reputation building. Um, really any application that you buy is going to charge per license or per Google page that you have. So if you have one Google page for your business, you just have pay for one license. If you have multiple, you'd pay for another. So that's kind of the most common question we get is like, how does it actually work from a billing perspective? Um, you're going to have, you know, low end solutions that, you know, might be um, as low as, you know, 150 bucks a month that are just apps that simply do one thing all the way up to really high end solutions that are, you know, $500 or more and try to sell you whole marketing solutions, you know, um, for your business. Um, most things are bundled in, in different, you know, varieties. Um, when, you know, when we look at it for our business, we are laser focused on one thing. We want to be the best in the world at helping people drive more reviews and build their online reputation. So we don't do a lot of the other stuff, you know, that you'll see. And so, um, our pricing, um, is standard is $300 a month, uh, per location that you, we work with. Um, 250 for locations that have multiple locations. So you get a discount if you have multiple. Um, but if you're um, a Rhino customer, um, you can get a, an extra discount on that um, as a, as part of our partnership and, and plan going forward. Um, but we kind of fall into the middle, you know, tier of that um, where we try to be reasonable for the business. Um, but the other thing that as you look at, you know, if I'm going to bring in a partner, how do I do this? There's really a lot of the options on the table are really just tech and you just buy it and you have to own it and run it. Our go to market strategy, Chris, as we've talked about, is I don't think businesses need more technology. What they need is results in their business. And so our kind of market differentiator is in addition to some of the, the tactics that we use is we do everything for a customer. We set it up, we continually optimize campaigns, similar to the work you guys do on, on all the other marketing stuff. We're really tailoring that experience. And it's not just to set it up and forget it, you know, kind of mentality. So that's kind of our, our approach to it. Got it. So, and that's something that's incredibly important to contractors. A lot of times they need us to, they need us to do it for them. Um, and, and that's just the nature of the beast, I think. And, and I'm okay with that. And that is how Rhino is set up is to do it for them. Um, and, or to at least keep track of things for them and, and keep them educated based on what we're doing. Um, so I think that's the one thing about you guys that really, um, I loved that set you apart was that same, like that same mentality of like, we need to just, how much of this can we take off their plate and do for them? So they continue to do other things, run their business, do whatever. Um, yeah, absolutely. Well, and we do like, like, just to give you an example, you know, we look at our messaging at a macro level. So when you plug into us, you're plugging into a thousand companies. We're looking at the analytics for everything from headers to content to timing, all of those factors. At a local business, it would be really unwise for you to spend time testing email language. You know, you should go out and just do more jobs and, and make money. And But when you plug into us, that's our job. So if we can make incremental small improvements and apply it across the board, it makes a big difference, you know, for our customers. And it's just one of those things they never have to worry about again. Got it. So I'm going to try to close this thing out by, by acting as if I'm in, you know, I'm, I'm now going to hire you. Okay. So I'm a contractor. I know I need help. I know I've been stagnant. Um, and I need some help. And I say, Zach, I want you to help me. Um, what's that process look like? Kind of just give me a high level. You need to go deep into anything. Just kind of give me the, uh, start to finish. And then, you know, basically purpose process payoff, like type of methodology, like take me from, Hey man, how do you help me? What do you need from me? What are you doing? And here's the outcome. And then like, let's just go down that path. Yeah, absolutely. So when someone reaches out, we'll typically do a quick demo, show them exactly how it works uh, for their team uh, on a quick Zoom, you know, typically. 
And then if somebody signs up, we will get everything set up within 48 hours. So we'll get the licenses set up, the profiles, the language, all of that stuff. We schedule a 15 minute onboarding call. We recommend bringing anybody on your team that's going to be involved with it. So typically it's not just an owner, it's a marketing manager, an office manager role. And we walk through it, make sure they're good with the language and everything. And then we ask them as their homework assignment coming out of that meeting to give us what we call a historical list. So Chris, you know, this is what we did, right? Where we said, hey, give us the customers that you currently work with, you've worked with in the last couple of years, and let's go get reviews from those first. Let's add a ton of value right up front, get a bunch of reviews, get Google used to you getting more reviews. And then we'll start running that within seven days, as soon as you get it to us. And uh, we'll also have one more follow-up meeting just to figure out the integration piece. So if you're using, you know, Service Titan, we'll connect into that or whatever the CRM is, you know, we can connect to it and figure out the process for your business to make it really easy ongoing so that it's sustainable. And that's really it. We like to get started within seven days, just like we talked about Dave. I think within seven days, you know, he had reviews dinging every day, you know, from the, our initial conversation. So we like to go fast and we like to drive results right away. Is that common? Is is it common to get results like that that quickly? I mean, my experience in buying technology is it usually takes a month to get anything set up. So before anything's live. So we, we try to be different in that. Um, and uh, it just kind of it's part of our service model. Just do everything for you. And just here's the key things we need from you. Really just customer data and get the connection set up and, and let us run. Is there any sort of like ongoing monthly like reporting or anything like that you do? Is I mean, is there there's probably some automation to that, too. But is there actually like touch points and things like that? Yeah, so by default, we can we can certainly do it more frequently, but we provide a monthly report of all of the data. You know, here's how many sends, here's how many reviews, uh, conversion rate, that kind of data. And you also have access to our dashboard where you can see it in real time. You Perfect. know, anything that comes in and easily respond to the reviews. Cool, man. So Liftify, I mean, it was five-star reviews. I think you did a great job on doing the rebrand. So congratulations on that. I mean, it's better to do it earlier than later. I've had to go through one. But not a lot of people <laughs> know this, but... Rhino used to be called Brickyard Marketing back in the day when I first started it. And I waited eight years before I did a, a rebrand and it was painful to go through it. But I'm so glad I did because it was the right move to make because Brickyard only made sense when we lived in Indiana and worked in Indiana. But as soon as it went to a national business, it was different. So, but hey, listen, um, I commend you, man, for like, uh, you know, for really digging into this and doing a great job and going out and getting good customers and and keeping them. That tells me a lot about the reputation of your business is how you retain your customers, um, but also what you've done for us and what you've done for some of Rhino's customers as well. So I look forward to a great partnership and you helping a lot of our contractors along the way. Um, if they want to reach out to you because they heard you on this podcast, what's the best way for them to connect with you, Zach? Yeah, so feel free to connect with me on uh, LinkedIn. Just search Zach Garrett Liftify and feel free to connect with me there or email me at Zach at Liftify.com. Uh, and I'll I'll definitely get back with you there. Um, if you're interested in getting a demo or, or learning more, uh, just go to Liftify.com and you can schedule the demo right there. See some of the use cases, the companies we work with, um, and we'd love to help. Perfect. So uh, listeners... Take advantage of these situations. Like even if it's not, even if it's not Zach, find some company, you know, and and run with it because you don't want to just sit and be content with the reviews that you've got or complain about the reviews that you don't got because you're concerned if you put it out there, you're gonna get some negative ones. Like take action, do something. You gotta be, you gotta be a little bit more proactive here and to help your business in 2023. So reach out to him. He just shares information with him with you. Um I appreciate you coming on giving me your time, man. Like it's exciting. You know, it's, this is going to be quite an exciting year for the trades. And I think that we literally got to use every tool in our belt to be successful. Um, make sure our branding is on point, make sure our marketing is on point, make sure our customer service is on point, make sure that your reviews that are viewed so frequently when making a decision to use a business is on point regardless. So Zach, I appreciate you giving me the time, man. Yeah, thanks for having me, and uh, thanks to the you know all the listeners. I'm a long time listener, Chris. Thank you for doing this podcast. I've learned a lot from it, and I'm sure uh, a lot of people that aren't in this seat, you know, would express that thanks too. That uh, this podcast has been helpful for even me, you know, being young, running a business, and I'm sure a lot of other people. I appreciate that. Thank you very much, man. And speaking of that, um, I that I will take that as a thoughtful review, in which because we run this podcast real time, um. I didn't even get a chance to use my normal production form. So uh, I had to come up with questions and just write on a piece of paper. And I typically am prepared with a review to finish Zach, but this time I am not. So I have no review to share on the end of this podcast because I didn't prepare in time for it. I'm doing too many things at the end of the year and beginning of this year to, uh, to have, I guess, got my shit together. So <laughs> 
Hey, I'll use this opportunity to say, if you've not left a review for To The Point podcast, please do. I love reading them. It's easy to do. You literally can go to the app, scroll the bottom where it says leave a review and boop, click the star that you want, preferably the five, if that's what you mean, and then leave a little comment. I love it. And I read them on every single podcast anyway. So please, please, please go in and review the podcast, subscribe to it. Check out the YouTube channel, doing a bunch of cool new stuff there. Lots of TikTok stuff. We're going all in this year. We're putting everything out there. We've had lots of great guests, lots of great content, and we aren't sharing it near enough. So we will be now. And we already are, which is great. So, Zach, I appreciate you, dude. Good luck to you this year. Uh, 100% that you're going to have some people listening to this podcast right now that are going to reach out to you. Just make sure you let, you show them a little TTP love, to the point love. Um, obviously, any Rhino customers that are listening to this podcast, which we have quite a few as well, they got the hookup. So um, just reach out to Zach. He'll get you squared away. But I appreciate you all. And again, we talk about reviews being like one little piece of the SEO puzzle. There's lots of pieces. You don't have to do it all. You don't have to do it all. You can, there's agencies that can help you do these things who know more than you. You need to run your business, but you don't have to do everything, but you got to do something. How do you finish a podcast, Zach? What do you say? You don't have to do everything, but you have to do something. No zero days. I've been running with the no zero days thing. It's something I firmly believe in, but you got to do something to make yourself better every single day. So I appreciate all you listeners. Until next time, we'll see you. Listeners, thank you so much again for listening to this podcast week after week. We are extremely grateful. Again, the whole purpose of this podcast is to give back to the home services industry that we love so much, whether you're a rhino or not. We really, really appreciate all the subscribers. And if you haven't subscribed yet, please go in and subscribe and you'll get all the episodes sent to you automatically weekly. Also, we have really enjoyed your feedback. Uh, it's so meaningful for us when we get to read the nice comments that you guys put. So keep doing that. And if you don't know how to do it, Here's what you got to do. You search for To The Point Home Services on Apple Podcasts. You click on our profile, scroll all the way down to the bottom and hit write a review and be honest and share your story and how the podcast has impacted you and your business. Thanks again from the bottom of our hearts at To The Point Home Services Podcast. We appreciate you.